Hey, Shad here with Speed Addicts, the fastest growing gear site on the web. And today we're gonna uncreate the highly anticipated Shoei X15. What's up, Speed Addicts fam? The wait is finally over. The new king is here. The X15 is dropping and we've got all the information for you. But first, before we get into the full breakdown, do us both a favor, subscribe to the Speed Addicts channel. Don't miss out on the latest gear reviews. We're always getting a first look at the latest gear. Subscribe and don't miss out. Also, if you decide you'd like to purchase one of these glorious X15s, we would appreciate it if you shop with us here at Speed Addicts, it'd be nice. We make it easy. There's a link in the description below to get you right over to the X15 at speedaddicts.com. And while you're over there, you can still shop for any other parts or gear you might need for your next two wheel adventure. Okay, Shoei, one of the gold standards in the helmet game, high quality, high performance, Japanese made ultra high level of craftsmanship going into every Shoei helmet in case you're not familiar. When Shoei comes out with a new iteration of a model, they typically don't just throw it all away and start from scratch, right? This is fine tuning, slight adjustments, slight gains, and even those slight gains make big differences when you're talking about going 200 miles an hour here. Uh, think of it as maybe a Porsche 911. Every iteration looks like a 911, just slight tweaks to make it that much better. That's what we've got going on here with this X15. Now you're thinking, Shad, just give me the, if you boil it down, what's different about the X15 as opposed to the older X14? If I had to dial it into three different things, I would say safety, aero, and ventilation have all been improved and you will feel it out on the track. This thing ventilates amazingly well we're gonna show you why in a minute and break it all down, but huge ventilation, exceptionally quiet uh, for a racing helmet with lots of ventilation, excellent aero, improved drag and lift, and we have all the latest slew of safety homologations attached to this thing. So when you're protecting your gray matter, I know that is important. Show is always trying to push the boundaries when it comes to the safety. Now let's talk about the price. Also pushing, pushing boundaries here. We got $899 for solids, all the way up to an eye-watering $1,049 for our racer replica, okay? Not inexpensive. What you're paying for when you're talking about a showy helmet is the performance, not just this year, not just next year. Talking three, four, five years down the road, that's when the dividends get paid on this sort of investment. Lesser helmets, you're gonna end up buying two of them in that time period if you're wearing them a lot. You know, your two, three, $300 helmets, the adhesive starts to give out, things start to fray. Showy quality will really show itself in those extra years. Useful life of the helmet is five years from the time you wear it. And of course, Showy's gonna back it up with a five-year warranty. Shell construction, it's Showy's proprietary AIM Plus. You know, that stands for Advanced Integrated Matrix uh, Plus Multi-Fiber Shell. It's a proprietary blend of fibers and it is, you know, a composite shell here. It's one of the things Shoei is known for. Now, the weight, it's gonna come in at 1,660 grams or about 3.5 pounds. Shoei's are never the lightest helmets. And when you ask them about that, they will say, we're trying to make the safest helmet we can, not the lightest helmet. So yes, there are other exotic helmets out there that do racing helmets that are lighter, but that is, again, not what Shoei's going for. They're going for safety. They're going for aero here. And all these latest gen GP helmets that are very long, you see how long this helmet is, uh, are not necessarily, not necessarily the lightest helmets um, because of the size of them, because of the length and the extra aero work that's been put on here to make them slipperier. Always a hard word to say. Let's talk about safety here. Of course, DOT, legal to wear on the street in the USA. The next two are a little bit more complicated as the new safety standards roll out here. We're in 2023. The landscape becomes complex. We try to stay up to date and educate ourselves. Even in that, it is difficult to tell, you know, exactly where you wanna be in the safety standards and different homologations. And it will depend on the sort of riding and sort of crash you might anticipate. Now, with that out of the way, what we have here is an ECE 2206 helmet. ECE 2206 is a new updated homologation for uh, Europe, okay? 22 stands for the regulation 22 over there, and this is replacing 2205. So you are getting that 2206 homologation here. That's great because 
over the 2205, you're getting three extra drop tests. They're testing for rotational energy, high velocity, low velocity. They're really trying to set up a test that encourages manufacturers to make a very well-rounded and safe helmet. Now, in addition to that, Shoei really believes in Snell's M2020R. Now, a lot of the Snell helmets you're gonna see in the United States are M2020D, which is more aligned with the DOT standards and getting helmets that are both Snell and DOT. The M22R is a test regimen that is more closely aligned with the European standard or regulation 22 and the new FIM standard so that they can thread that needle. The M22 or 2020R is aligned with FIM ECE. And so that's kind of where they've gone with this racing helmet here. So you got the EC2206, the Snell M2020. R, okay? I know it's a lot of information. There's a lot of good articles out there. If you want to read up on those homologations and decide what's right for you, check that out. I encourage you to do your own research there. Intermediate oval head shape. It's going to fit most of those heads in the United States. Now with that, this is the most customizable showy helmet to date because of how the headliner is constructed in multiple pieces. They have tons of different thicknesses. They have different densities you can really fine tune the fitment. So if you've got a more long oval or you got a more round head, you still might be able to make this work because of all the custom options. I'm gonna show you more about that in a minute. Four shell sizes. So first shell size is extra small, small, medium, you get your own shell. Large, you get your own shell. Extra large 2X, another shell. So four shell sizes, more shell sizes are better. Of course, you get a closer fitting head as snug as you can without discomfort. Remember, focus on the crown. We can adjust lots of things in this helmet. You're gonna see size range, extra small through to extra large. And we have found the X15 to run true to other showy models. So if you have an X15, X14, you've got a you know, RF1200, you got an RF1400, anything like that, order the same size, you'll be in good shape. And the one thing compared to maybe an RF1400 or RF series in general, it does have that race fit just a little closer in the face. Again, if it's too close for you after break-in, you can always adjust those cheek pads. Now, remember, with helmet fitment, we understand you're shopping online. You might not get it right the first time, and that's why us here at SpX, we offer no-cost returns. That's right. With a couple clicks, you can get that free return label, get the helmet on the way back here. Uh, we do not nickel and dime you like those other guys. To qualify, you just have to live in the lower 48 states and make sure the gear is brand new in the original condition, and we will hook you up, treat you like family, make gear shopping online very easy. Back to the helmet, and enough with my shameless plugs. Let's talk about the aero design here. So they went through 150 iterations in the wind tunnel to improve the aero work on this helmet. Many years of R&D went into this, working closely with MotoGP stars like Mark Marquez to really dial this thing in and get a few extra miles an hour on those straights. The lift improved by 1.6%. Again, small uh, gains here. Drag reduced by actually a full 6.1%. So that is the aero package. Now, the thing I like about what they did with the aero, they improved it without having to do a big add-on spoiler. This is all part of the helmet. This is how the helmet comes out of the box. And this is how you're supposed to race it. You don't have to bolt on an extra giant fin, you know, Fast and Furious style. Um, I know some of the other GP helmets kind of in this range or have different ads on add-ons. You have to fight with adhesive and clip them in. No, there's none of that. This thing's ready to go right out of the box. You're ready to rip. And that rear spoiler sure does look good. Let's talk about the ventilation. This scoop looks familiar, a little bit like that X14 scoop. What you'll notice is they ditched the brow, the brow vent here. Now, having holes down by an opening is a, is a bad thing. If you get a hit in, the, in that section where there are holes drilled for ventilation, it kind of is more prone to cracking. I'm not sure if that's why they did away with that or not, but I think it, it could be a safety issue. So now we're back with one crown uber scoop. I guess we'll call it. There are four different ports here. They're moving from six millimeter ducts all the way up to 10 millimeter ducting. So when we look at the inside EPS, we're gonna notice bigger holes in the X14. You have switches on both sides plus the middle. The middle controls the two holes under here. And then individually, I mean, you can, if you, if you have one on and one off, will you go in a circle? You might, but you have full flexibility here. Uh, just beware. Okay, down chin bar. This vent is going to kick air into your mouth. It comes out right by the hydration clip, 
We're gonna show you that more in a minute. And then you have a second stage. This is going to, these two scoops are going to blow air up onto the face shield, help keep it, keep it clear of uh, fog, moisture, that sort of thing. And then this also ducks in, these two intakes, ducked into the ventilated and cooled cheek pads. Yeah, it's nice. You deserve it. Showy, the only folks I know of that have uh, ducting that blows air directly into their cheek pads and circulates it around. Very cool helmet, and we know that little things like that can make the difference on those long track days or race days, keep you cool, keep you from making mistakes, right? So you have seven intakes, lots of holes in the front of the helmet. As we move to the back, some real cool looking ventilation here. This is all, the way this is designed is all to encourage that Venturi exhaust to suck the hot moist air out of the helmet. You've got six escapes here or, or um, exhaust vents up here, okay? Underneath this aero diffuser um, and down in the winglet section. So this thing is just a monster when it comes to ventilation. X14 was really good too, it was no slouch, but they've upped their game here. The channels inside are deeper. Again, the ducts are bigger, and we're gonna show you more on that in a minute. The other thing that is noticeable in our testing is that it is even quieter than we expected. Usually racing helmets, ton of ventilation, big intakes, really howl you know, at the track, and top speeds, not here. Surprisingly quiet racing helmet, if that's important to you, uh, something worth considering. Okay, let's check out this face shield. Some great things going on with the face shield here that I really like. This is their CWR F2 face shield. Um, the same face shield and mechanism, similar mechanism as the RF 1400, which is awesome. You just found out, yeah, I can take my photochromic shield from my RF 1400 and put it on my new X15 for the track or whatever riding you can switch the, the iridium shields. They all are all interchangeable. Now, the one thing that's a little bit different about the face shield that comes stock on here um, or the other race prep face shields that are specifically technically for the X15. They call them the CWR F2R as in race. And these ones are pin lock or sorry, tear off prepped. So you notice this big tab that's for tear offs. Now the tear off prep shield, the F2R is available in clear. That's what you're going to get on your helmet. You can also get light smoke, dart smoke, and high vis yellow all prepped for the track with both that tear off post on the outside and the pin lock prep on the inside. The pin lock is included. So inside your box, just to recap, I know I just said a lot. You are going to get your helmet. You're gonna get a swag bag, um, swag bag, a helmet bag, right? The typical showy helmet bag. You're going to get a clear face shield that is pin lock and tear off prepped. You are going to get a pin lock Insert, in case you're not familiar, this is for anti-fog. It creates a dual pane system to reduce or eliminate fog. You're gonna get a chin curtain and a, a chin diffuser. I'm gonna show you that in a minute. So you do not get an extra shield. You don't get a smoke shield. You don't get any extra shields all sold separately. Uh, this is a dark smoke in case you're wondering over here on the Marquez 7. Okay, you have vortex generators on your face shield. These little speed bumps over here on the side. That's what's going on. The thing I like about this face shield over the X14 face shield is that they've moved the tab to open it into the middle. That way you're not guessing which hand, you know, you just, in the middle just seems to make more sense for me. And that's where they put it. You also have a lock, right? So if you're doing, <clears throat> there, there is unlocked. So you're ready to go, put your face shield down. It's going to lock and then you get that safety lock. This is very nice to have, especially in racing situations, much higher speeds. Things can go catastrophically wrong if you don't have a good shield lock. So you wanna unlock the shield, you're gonna pop that out. You're gonna push down. This is the second stage, right? So this is a push button and you're gonna lift up. It's a ratcheting system. It feels a lot like other showy helmets. So you get a number of detents or ratchets. There is all the way open and there is all the way closed. The shield changes are nice and easy. They've got their their patented trigger system here where you're gonna push that, actually, sorry, I have it in lock position. You're gonna push that forward and the shield comes right on and off. Super easy. Now, one thing that this has that the RF1400 doesn't have is this safety racing lock. So if I lock this down, it's not gonna allow me to remove the face shield. And that is a security system for in case you're in an accident, it's more difficult for the shield to disengage when it gets hit and come off the helmet. So it's a safety thing. If you're wondering what that red tab is about, and it is on both sides, okay? So firm injection molded shield, a variety of colors, right? 
you got the, the tear off prep one, but if you're going with the standard RF 1400 uh, shields, the, uh, the just the F2 series, you've got iridium in all different colors. You got photochromic and all the smokes and all that sort of good stuff. All right, face shield is the same as the RF 1400, but the eye port is actually enhanced. So you get five millimeters more vision in all directions. So they've improved the vision over the 1400, even though it's using the same shield, which is great in a racing situation. And you can also adjust the way this sits on your head for a tuck or a more upright position that's controlled by the cheek pads that we're about to show you here in a second. Now that does it for the exterior of the helmet. Let's, uh, let's climb inside here and see what we're working with. Also, people always ask what we clean our helmets with here, especially the matte finish helmets. We like Molecule Helmet Cleaner. After I manhandle one of these things and it's got fingerprints all over it, especially the matte finish, this molecule um, that's made specifically for matte helmets, really cleans them up nicely. Check that out. It's at Speed Addicts, you can get it there. Okay, you get a breath guard on the outside. This also comes uh, uninstalled in the box, so that's waiting for you, right? You're gonna wanna pop that in place. Let's look at the underside of the helmet. So, like I said before, you get that chin curtain and you get the spoiler. Let's start with the chin curtain. Everybody's seen a chin curtain before. This is not gonna come installed, the helmet comes separately. If you wanna install it, it's got this plastic lip on it. You're gonna shove that in between the shell and the chin bar pad. And then you will have a nice mesh elastic banded chin curtain that will help keep some of the noise and elements out of the helmet. Or if you're looking for max speed, go with the spoiler. This is an improved aerodynamic situation here. You're gonna slide that in that same spot and it's gonna reduce turbulence, make you go faster. Come on, if you wanna win, use this one. If you wanna be comfortable, use the other one. Let's talk about these cheek pads. These are exciting cheek pads. I'm gonna show you why. Not only are they emergency quick release, but they are vented and adjustable and they control the position or the tilt of the helmet on your head. So let's go ahead and pull these out of place. So emergency quick release in case EMS has to slide these out of place before they remove the helmet off your head. That's a great thing. Now, all different size or all different types of thicknesses are available. You can adjust the foam inside of them. Lots of ability to really dial in the fit, which is important, especially for competitive racers and you weaken warriors. Now, if you want to adjust the way that the helmet is sitting on your head, you're going to just basically slide these, uh, these tabs into different places right here. And that will adjust how the cheek pad mounts inside the helmet, thus adjust the, uh, the way it's sitting on your head. Very cool. The other thing is that you can see the foam, see all those holes in the foam. That is the ducting I'm talking about. These are cool, cool, cool cheek pads and the air is blowing into them from these holes. And so you see that all these, this ducting here, the intakes from that chin bar are blowing air right through these holes directed into this foam, cooling your face. It's awesome. I told you they're awesome cheek pads. I'm not lying. Okay, here we go. We're gonna pull out the other one. Now, even though this is considered a racing helmet, I know a lot of folks are wearing it on the street and not necessarily even on a sport bike. I know people on touring bikes that have worn the X14 and probably wear this one because they like the way it ventilates. They like all the custom customization that's available for the fitment. Let's open these D rings here and climb inside. So that is to say that even if you are, um, for those of you that aren't wearing on the track, you wanna run a comm system. There you go, I spit it out. You got ear pockets here for, or speaker pockets. We're gonna open this up. Some of these, uh, some of the racing helmets on the market, especially when it comes to the top flight GP stuff, they won't have speaker pockets. They'll kind of neglect that. A lot of guys want it. It's in there. You got speaker pockets, you're comm system friendly. You can run a clip style. You can run an adhesive style. No problems here. Very um, easy to mount here. It's nice and flat. They didn't put any weird angles. It's a good thing. So there are your speaker, speaker pockets. As I turn this around, you'll notice a couple things. You've got this slot right here. This is to pinch your hydration tube. So there is a showy hookup for this if you wanna use their proprietary hydration setup or you can use your own, but it is dialed in for that. Up above the hydration spot, you'll notice it's got a nose indentation. A lot of people get claustrophobic when you're close to the chin bar. They go, am I supposed to be this close? It feels weird. Don't panic, okay? It's not a bad thing to necessarily be close to the chin bar and they're kind of dialing you in. You want that fit as snug as possible without causing discomfort. Okay, that's what that's about. All right, let's remove this headliner. The headliner is equally as impressive 
Again, this liner is all, the materials here are distinctly showy. They're meshy, they're comfortable. This looks like the stuff that are in some of the other RF series and the X14. Uh, so no surprises there. It's wicking, it's antimicrobial, it's their Max Dry system. Now let's remove the headliner here. Two snaps in the back, and then they have this blade system in the front. Um, the blade system in the front's nice instead of the snaps in that you don't get any pressure in your temples, right? No hot spots, that's good. It is kind of a pain to put back in place. It's not too hard to pull out, but I always fight with it going back in. Okay, let's move the helmet out of the way so you can get a real good look at what's going on here. You see there is an awful lot. Now this helmet or this helmet liner is held together with Velcro. Now, once you have it out of the helmet, I can just remove the Velcro and get different fitting pads, different density pads, you can get different socks. You can replace the interior foam. You can get all new pieces and really dial in that shape. If you have a longer, narrower head and you need more, uh, more cushion in those sides, you're able to do that with this. You see how this is totally modular system, totally comes apart, really fine adjustment levels here. Once you get through like the different thicknesses, again, they have different densities. The possibilities are pretty much endless to make your X15 yours. Now it's not just those side pads, it's even the back pad. So I'm gonna pull this apart. Now, these adjustments with this headliner do not adjust the way the helmet sits on your head. That's all done with the cheek pads. This is just gonna adjust the fit on your head. So that is the back pad. You can get a different neck uh, roll pad. And also with the front, same thing. So if you need help with this, because it is modular, there's a lot going on here. I suggest you t call and talk to one of our, our helmet techs. A rider support team is here to take care of you. So honestly, I've never seen a liner this adjustable. This is really pro level stuff. No, I'm not gonna put it back together right now because we'll be here all day. But that is the new liner system, very cool. Let's look inside. Okay, multi-density EPS liner. One thing I noticed with this helmet is that it looks like the channels are a bit bigger. That's gonna allow the airflow to work through this liner. You notice the liner, a lot like the cheek pads. Well, now we have a Velcro situation. The liner, like the cheek pads, has holes in it, okay? That's to get that air, promote that airflow to get onto your scalp and keep your brain cool. And like I said, they move to those 10 millimeter ducts. You see the size of those holes up there in the forehead area? Just a ton of ventilation. I can't emphasize how well that this ventilates. The other thing you're gonna notice, again, this is not Snell. M22D, you notice it is in fact the M22R, which is what they were going for here. And uh, that does it, that is the X15. Appreciate you sticking out with me. Hopefully you had some popcorn, maybe a beer. You enjoyed the ride. This thing is definitely gonna be one of the weapons of choice for our hardcore track day guys, our competitive racers. It is the X15. Five year warranty from Shoei. If you still got questions, call us, talk to us, Rider Support standing by at speedaddicts.com where you can always talk to a human over the phone, emails, or live chat. Once you get one of these, once you rip the track, let everyone else know how you like it. Don't just take my word for it. Hit us up in the comment section below. That does it for today. We'll see you next time to find out what's in the crate.